Put the speakers on mute. Yeah, if you put your speakers on mute, can you do that? Mm -hmm. yeah. you and I too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to see both of them. No, I don't want them both. I'm not broke, Dan. I'm not. Oh, it's Candace. I hear your baby. Oh, she clicked it off. Yeah. All right, we're going to get started. I have for special prayer request, uh, Miss Snell, who had a birthday uh, this week. Remember her? And then Betty Brewer, who came to church here forever and married this, the music guy uh, and moved. Y'all know who I'm talking about? Betty Brewer at Birchwood. I always came to Patsy. And she had married this, the music guy who's Von, who's from here. Anyway, he passed away this week. And oh. it's all about that. So remember that family in prayer. Miss Barb Robertson is in the local hospital. She is dehydrated, so they hooked her up to dehydrate her. Ron Sells' his daughter, um, it, it, I think that's a cheerleading family, but I think she got hurt in cheerleading practice. Karen, do yeah. you know much about that? Oh, they're on mute now. Uh, Karen, can you unmute here for just a minute and tell us about Ron Sales? See somebody you know about Ron's daughter. Um, I didn't even know about it till I got the call. Okay, but it was a cheerleading accident, was accident, wasn't it? I don't know. Okay. I think she was. Anyway, remember that family in prayer. Uh, remember Sandy's mom and dad in prayer, my mom and dad, my mom took off again Monday night and we've had a time and so we're in the process of trying to go to get her moved to Cleveland and she doesn't even think she's sick and so pray for them that more just work that out. Uh, Dr. Will Holt, they, they put him on hospice, uh, remember that family in prayer. Um, we had three that lost their lives in our county last night in a house fire, which is so ironic for uh, this time, so remember those families. You know, anybody else have prayer request for? Joe Angel wrote wrote his lawnmower off of a bluff. Oh, oh, you all right? Oh, terrible. He, he is okay, Patsy said, but they have to watch him tonight at home. He wouldn't go to the hospital. Oh, so. All right. Uh, somebody else was telling me today about somebody who drove their tractor off of the truck. Had it had the lawnmower for the pickup and was going to try to back it up a little bit, and backed it off and flipped it. And I can't think who that was, but mm. crazy times. All right. Remember Joe in prayer. I'm Patsy. I can't remember Miss Patsy in prayer. Others? Hey, Brother Jim. Uh, I'd just like to ask it, pray for all the, the men at the telephone company we're still operating as normal they have ppe equipment that they put on but we're still entering homes each day for installation and trouble calls and businesses and our guys are i guess they're a little on edge a lot of days but uh we're supplying them with the equipment they need right now but it's still a risky a situation when you go in a home. You know, I, I still think there are a lot of folks that aren't taking this serious. Too, we just really need to to kind of do the best we possibly can. I know it's hard, uh, but we have a lot of individuals who simply have to work. You know, they're called essential workers, and I don't really know where you draw the line to that. We're still doing food banks here, and uh, the county one. Isn't doing. They're not open other than if you call, we'll pick them up for you. But, but we're still doing that, and trying to be as safe as we can. We're fixing them, sitting outside the door, and and uh, and Houston just keeps eating up the door. <laughs> it's okay, Houston. Just chew some. Uh, don't swallow it whole in front of you. Anyway, and part of this, this is this is all such a all such a something different. So. But, but God, let me, I'll, I'll let you share something where there's a good part. You may have had a prayer request. Yeah, um, the Warlicks, I know, Elizabeth, this has been a really rough week for Jonathan, Joseph's brother. 
Um, he's woke up every morning just about this week. She said just bawling as soon as he wakes up. So this has been a really rough week. Um, yesterday was the one month anniversary, you know, one month mark of him passing. So it was, it's been a really rougher than others this week has been. So. That's a great win. I just, I just can't already imagine. And I know that Ms. Frieda has had several things on Facebook where they Easter stuff they've done and just breaks your heart. So remember the Holmes family and the Warwick family, the loss of that grandson. Remember Justina too, and that family. Yeah, remember those in our community that do have COVID. Uh, and then uh, Samantha and David have a friend in Georgia who got it and has been doing pretty good for the past couple of weeks, but then had a heart attack. So oh, he's on a ventilator. He's not doing well at all. Due to the virus, the heart attack? Uh -huh. I don't know if the, that was due to the virus. He's only in his 50s. I read so. something today that said if you're on a, a ventilator, your chances of making it real clear. Uh, that, that you try to stay off the ventilator. So. I really don't know if y'all can see this or not, but y'all notice the halo above my head. <laughs> can y'all see that? <laughs> we notice it moves too, so. <laughs> Just want you to know who you're dealing with tonight, okay? Glare, <laughs> glare, glare, glare off my head because the light. <laughs> Sorry. All right, anything good you want to share? There's good stuff going on. Something good. We've we've been preparing for our little granddaughter. I got oh. all the baby dolls out and um, some of Briley's outfits, and we've washed them. And she's got her baby furniture in, and so we've had fun getting prepared for that. It's given us a little time to do. Grandbaby dolls. Y'all know that. Once it gets, uh -huh. they'll be carrying around like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope you're looking like Michael and swinging. All uh, right, anybody else? Anything good you want to share? Houston, something good, brother. You're smiling there all fat and happy. Um, Angie and Keelan came by and set up an Easter egg hunt in our yard for my kids today. Oh, that's... Yeah. Hey, we, we were going to do... Uh, uh, pass out Easter eggs if we did the drive-in church study. We're not going to do that. But we have all of these eggs ready here. And so if you will give us uh, kids' names... We will make sure to hang some eggs on your basket, on your uh, mailbox. So if you search kids' names, we will make sure the bunny does his thing. Hagen wants Sunny said. That's what he said. I'm proud of it. Yeah, let him hold his breath until he gets there. All right. Anything good you want to share? Um, they're doing like different calls so people can. <clears throat> I was going to say, I'm thankful that mom and dad are doing as well as can be expected. Um, I've talked to her some. She's, she's not able to see anybody, and they've got them in isolation there in the nursing home. So that's kind of rough. But um, I'm just thankful that she's doing okay with it, considering. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Hey, Miss Lola, how are you? <laughs> Ray and I are great. We're like to never found you, so. Are you laying down or are you sitting up? I'm sitting up. I'm leaning over there for Ray to see it, too. I can see Kathleen to your house and straighten you back up, or are you laying down on it? <laughs> I can here, believe you me. But um, other than that, we're sitting here like two old people, so all I can tell you. Good. You look like happy. Helpful old people. That's God good. is good, so that's the good thing. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? We're making it. There's Miss Lola. There you go. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we are sure thankful to be here, even though we're not together physically, spiritually, we're in one place. And we thank you for that, Lord. We just thank you for new ways to serve you, new ways to share you. And God, we just pray that as we go through this time of of being different, God, that you'll just uh, allow us to trust you, hold on to you, and, and Father, to allow you to work in our lives even greater. Father, help us to be able to see needs, to be able to meet those needs. Uh, we thank you for the word. We thank you, Father, that you hear our prayer requests, these that have been mentioned, those that are in the hospitals and ill, those who've lost loved ones, this family that lost the whole family, Father, through this fire. God, we just ask that you comfort them. God, we ask that you speak to our hearts as we open up your word tonight. 
In thy name we pray. Amen. Hey, Brother Jim. I, I have a special unspoken prayer request. Okay. Special, special, special. All right, let's that. All right, we're in Psalms 123, continuing on. Now, this psalm is, is one of these psalms of ascent. There are uh, 15 of these psalms, like Psalms 120 to Psalms 134, or right in that area, if you count the 15. And they were written or almost journaled by the psalmist as they made preparation to go to the temple. And as they went to the temple, when they got to the temple, what they did while they were at the temple. And so I, I, I want to remind you that you have to remember that the temple was where God was. And so for us, we, we kind of equate it to like coming to church and, and as we should. Uh, there are a lot of things that the Psalmist 7 does that, that, that we ought to do the same thing. We, we ought to be happy to come to church. I know for a fact that probably from here on out, once we're able to congregate again, I think people are going to have a whole different view of church. Hey. Fellowship and that oneness and that ability to be with. I put a post on Facebook the other day. I just need to be in a big old room with Jesus people. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that, that's what I need. I need to be in a big old room with just Jesus people and, 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 and to be fed. So I, I think we'll have a different outlook on coming to church and probably maybe understand a little bit more how they must have felt by being able to go to the temple to make that yearly or bi-yearly or, or as many times as they were able to go, that in going to the temple, they were going to where the very presence of God was at. And so you got in the back of your mind, keep that, keep that there and, and continue to think about that. But they were on this way, and they were they were keeping, in a sense, a journal of this. And I encourage you, even I encourage you if you got kids, I think this would be a, a great thing for Kagan to do. Every morning, get up and journal. I, I think, you know, this is what day so-and-so of the quarantine will be like. Uh, you are making history right now. Never before has this ever taken place, and pray to God it never happens again. But, but this is actually a part of history that, that we will hear about later on. And, and I really think it doesn't seem important now, but years from now, 20 years from now or 30 years from now, it'll be real interesting, I, I think, to, to look back and to see how I spent my days and what I did and how I overcome and how God spoke to me. And so really, if you've not journaled, this would be a great time to do this. And this is what the psalmist was doing. He was kind of journaling his time as he, as, as he approaches this whole temple experience here. Now, Psalms 123 capture, captures this, this whole essence of, of his faith in, in this journey. It, it, it would be almost a faith journey. As the psalmist is journeying to Jerusalem, uh, he's peering now beyond the city. Now, if you remember... And, and you might want to write things down even in your Bible someplace. Psalms 120 was the preparation for the journey. It was about getting ready for that journey. Psalms 121 was the journey to Jerusalem or the journey to the temple. And then last week we talked about Psalms 122 is when he got there. It was as I said it's, it's like he was on the jet and he sits down and he puts his feet on the ground in the temple. And it was about being there. Well, then Psalms 123 is when he sets his foot down in the temple and he has now walked through the gate. He has walked through the door and he's in the very presence of the temple. Then what does he do? And we, we need to kind of understand this is that when he got in the temple, the very first thing that he looked for was the presence of God. Now, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of energy because I'm trying to keep this short tonight, uh, energy about the way the temple was made up. But what was in the holies of holies in the temple? Now you can speak. Interactive. What was found in that holies of holies? It was surrounded by what? A big curtain. curtain. And inside was the Ark of the Covenant. Covenant. Inside was those things that were inside of the Ark. But inside it was the very presence of God. Now, could anybody enter into the Holy of Holies? 
No. No? Who could? Priest. The priest. priest. So that priest would enter in yearly, and, 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 and he would enter into there. And so when they got there, the thing that they looked for was the presence of God. How close can I get to the very presence of God? One time we were at a, a convention in New Orleans, and we were down there in that massive, massive stadium, and, and Marcus Brent was with us, and he was probably 16 or 17. And what is that? The, what bowl is that down there? The, sugar. Sugar? No, the Superdome. Superdome. The, you shouldn't know that. You're from there. Uh, the Superdome. Mark's sitting there like, Superdome, Superdome. Uh, the Superdome. And so he, we were kind of segregated off from the whole thing, but he said, I want to go to the very top. And so we spent, I don't know, two or three hours trying to figure out how to sneak in and go up and around till we finally got to the very top of that dome to be able to look down. And, and if you ever sit up there and watch the vent, I don't know how you'd ever see anything other than wide screen. But the idea was we wanted to get as close to the top as we could to say we had been. When they went to the temple, they wanted to get to the very closest place that they could to God. And so the psalmist here has taken this journey, and now he has entered into the city, he has entered into the temple, and when he gets to the temple, he wants to see God. He wants to get as close to God as he possibly can, and so now he's, he's in the presence of, of where the Holy of Holy might be, and he begins to think beyond earthly things. He, he begins to forget about the journey and the travel and, and everything that's going on. And he begins to concentrate. He is eager for his heart to be filled with God. And, 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 and I was reading that and I thought, man, this is the way that, that we ought to be. We should be eager to be filled by God. You know, the, the screen should be totally lit with 500 people on there, eager to hear what God has to say. Now, I want to read this psalm before we get into it. It says, Psalm 123. <laughs> Unto thee lift I up mine eyes, O thou that dwellest in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look into the hands of their masters, and the eyes of maidens under the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until that he have mercy upon us. <clears throat> have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us. For we are exceedingly filled with contempt. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorning of those that are at ease and with the contempt of the proud. Now, I want you for just a minute to think about a couple of things. But one, imagine how David must have felt uh, by simply being the king. You know, David was by no means perfect. He, he messed up. He, he was human just as we are human. But can you imagine the responsibility that David must have had on the human side? I, I saw our president on, on TV the other day, and, and, uh, and he was talking about something. And, and what caught my eye the most was that he literally looked wore out. He physically looked as if he was as tired as he possibly could be. And so in my prayer every day as I pray for our leaders and I pray for our president, uh, I, I prayed that day, God, not just that you would guide him directly uh, and spiritually, but, Father, that you would give him strength, physical strength, as he leads our nation right now. And I compare that to how David must have gotten weary and how he must have gotten tired. And, and here it says, you know, our soul is exceedingly filled with, with the scorning of those that are at ease and have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we are exceedingly filled with contempt. The writer was saying, I am telling this, I am talked about, I am hated by, I am made fun of, I am chewed out, I am so tired, God. It's what the psalmist is saying here. Now remember, this psalmist is, is, has been about this journey to come into the very presence of God. And so when he gets there, he goes beyond this earthly temple of Jerusalem Two, we, we sing this song, Beulah Land. Does anybody know what Beulah Land really means? It means New Jerusalem. Beulah Land, I'm longing for you. New Jerusalem, I'm longing for you. And so he is looking beyond the earthly, and he's looking to the heavenly. Now, this whole psalm is a faith thing. It, it's a powerful, powerful psalm. 
but he is eager that his joy be filled, that he might one day, someday, soon, that moment, whenever, come into the presence of God, and, and he puts his faith into God. Now, we walk by faith. We, we, we don't walk by sight. If we did, we would be scared to death. And, and, and I'm looking at all these faces of the children of God, who, who I know do the very same thing that we walk by faith. And walking by faith can be a, a terribly hard thing. If, if you've been at this church the last 20 years, you know that you have heard me say this a million times. Preaching on faith is the easiest thing in the world. What's the hardest thing? Believing. Trusting. Believing and living by faith. That's the hardest thing in all of the world to do. It. Talking about it, preaching about it, that's easy. But living by faith is really hard here. And so this psalmist is, 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 is writing about his faith when I come into the presence of God. Uh, Ironside wrote this. He said, faith is always looking up to God. It is seen beyond the visible to the invisible. It is seen from the temporal to the eternal. It is seen from the physical to the spiritual. Faith is the upward vision of the believing soul, looking beyond the circumstances of life to the Lord himself, who stands behind the events of this life and presides over them for his glory. He says that faith is the ability to look up. Have you ever seen anybody that, that the world has come crashing down and they are miserable and they are tired and they are weary and they've just given up? Are they looking up? Where are they looking? Down. Always looking down. Their head is down. Their eyes are down. Their heart is down. There is no looking up. But faith is the ability to always look up in regards to all the situations. Right now, and I have said this, this is the craziest time in the world. Uh, we, we are doing everything uh, by ear here. Uh, we, we don't have notes to play. We're just playing it by ear right now. We're just hopefully feeling like we're doing the very best, being led by God that we possibly can. I know that you as parents, I know that you as people who go and work, I, I know that, that you out there are doing the very same thing. And I wish that, that I had a textbook that would say, this is how we do this in a pandemic. But we don't really know. We just take it from day to day. But the psalmist says, in order to be successful, in order to have your heart not weary and not broken and not down, we have to, by faith, look up. You see, faith sees that God has an eternal purpose in all things. An all-wise plan, mapped out by him, made in accordance to his will for you and for me. God desires, and God has a plan for your life. He knew today what would go on. He, he knew where you'll be an hour from now. He knew you'd be sitting here. He knew you need to hear this. God knew these things. And so we ought to take faith in that. We, we ought to rejoice in this because faith is that looking beyond this present world to this unseen realm. Now listen to what the psalmist says. Unto thee I lift up mine eyes, O that dwelleth in the heavens. He's in the temple. But he's saying, listen, I have come into the presence of God, and I am going to lift my eyes up unto you. Now, is there a verse of scripture, anybody that pops out? I'm just giving my hand. Listen. We talked about this the other day. Unto, what are we going to lift our eyes up into? Heaven. The hills. The hills. The hills. There you go. The hills. Now, when, when we look at the hills, do we look down? No. Nope. We have to look up at them, don't we? And so the psalmist is saying that in this passage, in this place, God, I've come in your presence, and I am by faith going to look up to you. Now, I believe that faith now more than ever should be the upward vision of his children, of, of the church. I think that when we meet people, we ought to be able to say, listen, I, I don't know what's going on, but man, I, I know God is in control. I don't know about if the pandemic is going to hit in our little valley, but I know if it does, God's going to be in control. I, I don't know if, I, if, if, if I'm going to have a job tomorrow, but I know that God said his people not break bread. I know he's going to meet my need. And again, I, I reiterate this over and over and over. You have a need, you let our church know. And there's one thing about family here. Family takes care of family. Yeah? And so that's the way that, that God works here. And so this faith, now more than ever, needs to be this upward vision of us as worshipers as we gather to worship God collectively or as we gather to worship God in our homes where you're at right now. It ought to be a faith issue. Here, the psalmist is, is distraught. 
in this passage, he is hurt and, and, and he doesn't know where to turn. And so he realizes, I've got to turn to the Lord. Now, I got three E's for you. If you're writing stuff down, I got you three E's that you can remember this. The first one is the eyes of faith. In verse one, he says, Under thee I will lift up mine eyes, O thou that dwellest in the heavens. You see, with this glaze of faith, he confesses, God, I, I will lift up my eyes to you. I will look into the hills, so it cometh my strength. I will look up to you. And so when you start feeling a little claustrophobic, when you start feeling a little fearful, when you wake up at two in the morning and you're wondering about all of these things, the psalmist says, God, I'm going to look up to you. With my eyes, I'm going to look up to you because it's God alone that, that he, he, he rivets his eyes on. The psalmist is saying that in, in, when, when the wind is blowing every which way in the world, you, you got to rivet your eyes on God. you got to rivet your heart on God. Uh, growing up, did your mom ever give you the evil eye? <laughs> <laughs> I saw Marion Schultz on here. Miss Marion, how are you? I'm this, fine, Pastor. How are you? This is Steve's mom. Mom and Dave. <laughs> There he is. There's his mom over there in the recliner. And he does have his picture on. But I, but I know he's listening, so I'm kind of curious. Did you ever have to give old Steve Schultz the look of death? You bet. Uh, you bet. My boys, Miss Sheila would always play the piano, and so she would play the piano from up on the top, and, and my growing up always sit on the front row. And I would be in the preacher chair, you know, and they would never look my way. But I was maybe misbehaving, and all of a sudden, man, they would sit straight at attention. They, they, they would clean up their act. I'd look over at Miss Sheila. She'd be giving them that look at them, that mother's look. Two things my mother used to do. Did you ever get pinched right here in church? <laughs> you know, I'll give you something to cry about, pinch. You know what I'm saying? Or the look. And so, in a sense, when, when I was thinking about what the psalmist is saying, he is saying, what is... Well, if you're, if you're a teacher, one of the classes you take is the teacher look. And so think, think about sometimes Miss Sheila, if you ever, just kind of watch her when she gives you that look, you know. So I was trying to equate what he's saying here. But he says that, you know, when, when mama looks at you, do you look away? I mean, if you want to slap in next week, you do. I don't know, mama would ring my bell. And so I never looked away. I, I knew I needed to keep my focus on her. And the psalmist is saying this here. He's saying, listen, he says, we need to so fasten our look, our eyes. Unto thee lift up mine eyes, O thou that dwellest in the heavens. I have fastened my eyes on you. That's what he's saying. I have fastened my, regardless of, of, of the distraction, regardless of what's going on in your life, he says, I will still look to you, God. Whatever the threatening challenges are, I will exclusively latch my eyes onto you, and I will not look anywhere else, no matter what's going on. He places his faith in God to supply all of his needs. Now, he said, God, I want you to supply my needs. I want you to direct my life. I want you to strengthen my soul. Why did he say that? Is he at? He's in the temple. Who's in the temple? God is there. So God is on his throne in heaven, and the psalmist bows, and he, and, he, and, he, and he looks to God here. Now, the next thing, the other E, is examples. This is the examples of the faith. The first is the eyes. The second E is the examples of the faith. Now listen in verse 2. Behold, as the eyes of servants look under the hand of their masters, and the eyes of the maiden under the hand of her mistress, so our eyes... Wait upon the Lord our God until that He have mercy until that He have mercy on us. Now he, here he's talking about the faith uh, that a slave would have to its master. Now again, I, I say this. I, I could see David really relating to this because the slave knew everything that that he had was given by the master. His food, his shelter, his, his clothing, his protection. He had to look at the, the master for everything he had. And again, this whole ideal of slaves and masters is, is, is kind of foreign to us 
And we don't understand that. But in that point in time, a, 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 a slave had no right. And so if the master decided to give them bread or to withhold bread, it was up to the master. And so he is saying, you know, God, I'm going to trust you just like the slave trust his master for everything, whether you give to me or whether you don't. Now, David would have had this very same idea because he was the master of all of Israel. Imagine the, the stress and duress that he was under because this man who loved his people had to make sure they were fed. He had to make sure they were clothed. He had to make sure that they were protected. And those people looked to him for all of these things here. Their care was up to him. So the psalmist says, okay, it's like a master. Then he says, okay, now it, it, it's also this faith is like a maiden that has to look to her mistress as well. Now, what was the, the value of, 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 a, of a lady back in the day? There weren't any. You know, as I said, there was this old Jewish thing that said, you know, a man's ass is of more value than to him than his wife was. And so if his wife wasn't as valuable as a donkey, how much would a, 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 a maiden servant be worth? I mean, she was at the mercy of not the master who was able to give abundance, but she was at the mercy of the mistress who was at the mercy of the master himself. And so he says, then I will then look in my eyes upon God as even this this, this slave girl who has absolutely nothing, who's dependent upon the mistress. Even, <coughs> trying to show us that no matter how low we get, no matter where we get, that, that we are to look to God to take care of our needs. And this is the same way that we're to look to God in our faith. Same identical thing he's saying here. Continually relying on him with a steadfastness that, that doesn't break with an endurance that keeps us just continually moving forward, with perseverance that, that causes us not to give up until God does what? Gives us his mercy. That's what he's trying to say here. The psalmist is saying, I've come all the way to, to Jerusalem. I've come all the way to the temple. I've come all the way to the presence of God. And God, I am going to hold on. I am going to fasten my eyes on you until you give me your mercy. Now, this is the last right here. What was the mercy for? He had enemies. There were enemies in the faith. Listen to what he says in 3 and 4. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us, for we are exceedingly filled with contempt. Now, what's he saying there? The psalmist found himself in a difficult situation. He was desperately needing divine mercy of God. We, we have endured so much contempt, he declared. He and they and we we are the object of, of fierce hatred, of fiery persecution. Uh, there is slander. We, we Imagine everything that was said about me. I'm telling you, you can't please everybody all the time. I've tried. I, sometimes I tell people, I juggle all the time. I juggle this side, keep them happy. I juggle this side, keep them happy. I <laughs> juggle this down. I, you know, it, it's just been 45 <laughs> years of this right here. One day my will get tired. I'm going to like, kids, everybody's going to fall. It's hard to do. Imagine how David must have been the king of a nation and, and how people must have talked and, and slandered his name and, 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 and all this persecution and, and, and all this hatred that was sent his way. He says, God, he says, there is an enemy to my faith. He said, all this mess just tears me down. Then he goes into forward, he says, our soul is exceedingly filled with scorning of those that are at ease and with the contempt of the proud. He's saying, you know, the saints have long endured much ridicule Lord, in the form of verbal taunts and venomous slander and, and, and from the proud who, who don't trust or even know you. They have been on top of us every day. He says we have suffered much contempt as well from the arrogant who look down on us. Isn't arrogance a terrible thing? I mean... Arrogant people just need to be slapped. That's all I have to say. Uh, sorry, see, that's why I don't do Facebook Live, because I do Facebook. I, I don't know if she's on my post today. I said, you know, don't ever let somebody tell you you're ugly. You are ugly, but don't let somebody tell you that. <laughs> that offended somebody today, and I thought, well, I don't know. 
But but arrogance, he says, just arrogant lot that, that don't trust you, that are self-sufficient, that look at the temple as being something crazy and, and, and our faith in you, when we should put our faith in ourselves and our own abilities, he, he says, they have wore me down. I have suffered much content. In spite of all of this, though, he says, I choose to keep my eyes on you. And, and my word of encouragement to you is choose to look away from the enemy and put your eyes on Jesus. You know, when, when the world beats you up, just turn away from the world. If we weren't watching the world, the world wouldn't affect it. I'm telling you, it's the wisest thing you'll do during this whole mess, turn the news off. That's a lot of it. Just, just, just look away from the world. Here in his psalm, he's found this encouragement that every believer needs. It is a psalm of encouragement to us today. In this psalm where we're motivated to look beyond our present circumstances and to look to Jesus. He was saying, I am in the temple, I am in the presence of God, and I am not going to look what's on the outside, but I am going to stay focused on what's the inside. Now, let me ask you a question now. Don't answer out loud. What is it that you're focusing on tonight? Had a guy tell me the other day, he's listening to my boss, he's killing me, I don't want to do it. He said, I have more stress with my boss right now than I do today. I'll be your boss. How about your job? Then what about your parents? What about an unfaithful friend? What about this virus? What about sickness, loneliness, pride, selfishness, stagnant spiritual life, no spiritual life, lost and undone without Jesus? What is it that you're focusing on right now? We need to refocus. We, we need to stop and we need to back up a little bit and, and we need to refocus. You know, we met here tonight for a reason, a purpose. God wanted to speak to us. And he's telling the church, he says, I want you to refocus in your life right now. I want you to stop, reevaluate, look the way things are going, look at where you're at, look at what has you control, look what has you bound, look what's binding you up, look what it is that, 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 that you're having trouble overcoming. Name it and claim it. Refocus. Get your vision off of the things down here and put your vision on the things up there. Ask God to give you a perspective of his power and his mind. Ask him to allow you to place your eyes on him as, as, as we're like this psalmist, as we enter into the very presence of, of, of a holy and a just God. That God, that's, that's all we really want. It's all that we really hold on to. I, I told somebody earlier, I said, this, this is the, the first time in 63 years that I will miss Easter in church. Yeah. Most of you are probably the same. The you will miss being in church on an Easter Sunday. I think I'm going to mail order me a new suit anyway. Something flashy. Yeah. Well, I'm, 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 I'm going to see if we get a hat and we're going to, you know, dress up and walk around the house. Uh, and, and, and it kind of depressed me there for a little bit. I thought, I can't imagine not being in church for Easter Sunday. But I had to change my focus. I thought, Sunday, I'm going to be in the presence of Almighty God, regardless of where I'm at. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hey. Right. Who loves me? Can I get a hey? Hey. Hey. There you go. Hey. I, I tried hey. To, there you go. I have tried to keep this short. But I want to share just something that will bring it to you. Oh, all know the account. Hey, Sam. We all know the account of Peter walking on the water. What was the problem when Peter began to sing? Took his eyes off Jesus. Lost his focus, took his eyes off of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yep. Times like this, we can lose our focus. Amen. 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 Right. Hey. Regain your focus. I just say, God, you know what? I want to, I want to lock my glaze on you. I want to lock my eyes on you. I want to refocus on you. <laughs> You and me, or you and equal as I'm I thought that was Michelle for a while. I'm trying to hurry, honey. <laughs> what do you mean? Anyway, refocus. It's okay. Amen. Amen. All minds clear, your hearts where they need to be. Let's pray. Father God, we ask that we keep our eyes on you. Father, the world is full of ways, it's full of 
ugliness and meanness and, and jealousy and all kinds of vile things. But it's also filled with love and joy and happiness because you're still here. And so, God, I ask you, allow us to refocus and, and just hold on. And we're so excited about Easter coming up. Father, we, the death and the burial and, and all that resurrection that just makes our hearts sing for joy. And so, God, we just pray that you give us opportunities throughout this whole time that we are incarcerated that we'll tell somebody about Jesus. In thy name we pray. Amen. And the church said, Amen. 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 Love everybody. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Have a nice day. We pray yeah, for ours. Well, after, after. Yeah, I love you, little girl. Joe, smack your kids off the head for me. I know they need it for something, though. <laughs> Jelly bean. Jelly bean. Hi, Jennifer. There's Jennifer. Hi. 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 My dog says hello. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Hi. Hello. Hi, Grandma. Hello. 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 Hello.